Buenos dias everybody, I am Ovi Duran. I do travel videos for Puerto Rico and Peru, but sometimes I do videos in my hometown here in South Jersey and Philadelphia. Subscribe if you haven't already and click on the bell to get notifications every time I upload a video. Now today I want to show you something that I've been holding for 19 years. Okay, here it is. It's a 1952 truck. Straight six engine. Okay, let's go inside. And this is the original steering wheel to this truck. Uh, original gauges. And the original AM FM radio from 1952. Now this also has a uh, three speed on the column. Let me show you. There we go. They call it the uh, three on the tree. And this is how you turn it on. Obviously you press on the clutch and then you press on this little this little thing here. I, I forget what to call it. Starter start switch or something. And obviously you put in the key, press on that, and it turns on. Unfortunately right now I can't turn it on because it's not working. The uh, starter blew up on me. Let me show you. Alright, so here's the starter. Now it's blown up on me twice. The solenoid went uh, on me, it blew up on me at one time, and then again the motor, the motor inside. And I suspect that this time the motor inside blew as well, because nothing happens when we or I try to start it. Okay, so this is what they call the advanced design, built between 1947 and 1955. There were minor differences. Uh, in the 1954 and a half to 1955 model, but basically they were all the same. Now, this is to me like a work of art. Uh, whoever was involved in building these trucks, kudos to you. Um, and also, I've had a lot of offers uh, about from people that wanted to buy this truck, and um, I'm like, mm, I don't think so. Yeah, I'm never gonna get rid of this truck. Not anytime soon anyway, so yeah. But the gas tank is right behind this seat, inside the, the truck, inside the, uh, the cabin. And here's the, uh, this is how you fill it up. Okay, so this truck has rally wheels. The wheels are not original. They're probably from a late 60s or early 70s car. And it's very straight. It has a very nice straight body. The way that you see it is how I bought it back in 1999, but I haven't taken it out in many, many years. Uh, probably, uh, I'm going to guess about 15 years. And the last time I washed it was maybe about five years ago. So today I'm going to pull it out uh, or push it out of the garage. And some of the parts are original, but I suspect not everything. Like for example, the doors definitely are not original they were slightly different. So these doors are probably from a 1948, 49, or 50 truck. And this is the tailgate. Now, what holds the tailgate in place is this chain. So if you let the chain, pull out the chain. And this is how it comes out. Okay, and the way you hold this bit in place is by inserting the chain right there. And again, on the other side. And there we go. You let go, and it holds the bed in place. 
To put, to put it back up, you just take the chain off, take the hooks off, push it up, and hook it up like so. And it has a wood, wood bed. Probably the previous owner uh, installed it. I don't think it's the original from 1952, definitely not. But they do sell kits to replace these beds. Now this truck is, body-wise, it's in excellent shape. I haven't done anything to it uh, other than replace the battery, the shock absorbers, and an oil change. That's about it. And when I had it working, it worked pretty, pretty darn good. Okay, so now this, this right here is a heater. A heater in 1952 was optional, but the owner of this truck, whoever bought it back in, uh, in that year, decided to, uh, he couldn't live without a heater. And this is the knob that turns it on and off right there. And here's another view of the steering wheel from this side and the instrument panel. All right, guys, the reason I know these are not the original doors is because the door handles in 1952 came up with, with a push button, and these are push down handles. Now, one good thing about this truck is I don't have to lift it up in order to get under it and replace the part from the engine or uh, the starter. It's so high off the ground that it doesn't need to be lifted up. Okay, so here's the engine. Like I said, it's a 235 straight six. Now this is not the original engine. The original engine was a 216 straight six. This engine belongs to a 1955 Chevy. I know because I looked up the serial numbers on the engine block and the heads and uh, they match a 1955 car. Now the owner of this car or this truck many years ago decided that the 216 was not powerful enough and they put in a uh, 235 which is has a little bit more power now the starter that broke on me at uh, that blew up on me goes right there right there and that one of the reasons why I haven't uh, attempted to fix it is because I'm not good at electrical wiring so this is the original wires right here there used to be a fuse here sometime so I just need to figure out how to fuse this and connect the uh, the wires to the starter there's the other one this one's okay it was just this uh, thick wire that blew up on me once too and I suspect that's what uh, blew up the starter so uh, maybe it's not thick enough not uh, it doesn't have the proper fuse who knows but if anyone has any ideas on what to do how to fix it let me know put a comment below and okay so this truck does not have an oil filter uh, the, the oil has to be changed maybe once uh, every thousand miles it has the original radiator all right so now this is a one barrel carburetor a Rochester carburetor I suspect it's the original uh, carburetor that came with the engine now I also have the original oil bath uh, air filter now this air filter is at the market someone uh, obviously put it there now it this came with a generator and it's been converted to an alternator uh, by the way this also used to be a 6 volt uh, truck and it was converted to 12 volts and they did a nice job with the wiring the only problem I'm having is the starter issue so pretty much everything looks uh, stock and it starts right up when the engine when the truck is in uh, running condition it starts right up no issues no problems the fenders are in good shape no rust anywhere maybe a little bit of surface rust underneath but it is in great shape okay like I said earlier I haven't washed it in years and one thing I like about this truck is it's split windows in the front the split windshield I think that's a nice touch and the air conditioning for 1952 is this flap here right here that lifts up from the inside and air will go in into the cabin so here's another look 
in the sun and yes I know I need to wash it and soon hopefully uh, sometime in the next couple of months after I get it back uh, working I'm really excited about it I love this truck and like I said earlier I, I never plan to sell this thing it's just a beautiful beautiful truck a work of art All right, let's go under it and see what's underneath. Now, one thing I didn't mention is this, this uh, rear belongs to a 1972 Camaro. And the brakes are Corvette disc brakes and a Corvette master cylinder. But it's, looks, it looks really nice down here. Now, one of the ideas that I have is once I start working on this truck obviously because of its age some of the things are gonna break some parts so the idea is to uh, take it slowly drive it drive it around the area so if it breaks down I don't have a, a, a ways to tow it I like the wheels even though they're not original the tires are very big now the one thing that when I'm driving down a highway with this truck it feels kind of stiff obviously because of its solid uh, uh, front axle This is the end of the video but before I go I want to wish all the fathers a happy Father's Day no matter where you are in the world have a wonderful day today and every day and I'll see you on the next one